Hello everybody, it's me Kirk Maston from Maston Labs. It is a beautiful fall day uh, here in sunny Ballard, which is a neighborhood north of Seattle. Um, today we are going to be talking about skin tones and how to get really nice skin tones and finding the right preset um, to use for those. So let's get started. I'm going to, this is going to be in uh, several parts. I'm going to show you just kind of an overview of what preset pack goes with which skin type. I'm going to give you a little bit of the theory and reasoning why. And then I'm going to go through community images and edit for you. And as a bonus today, I'm going to be editing in both Capture One and Lightroom. And I'm going to go with Capture One first. But if you don't use Capture One, you know, hang out for a minute and we will get to Lightroom. And if you're vice versa, then you're like, I'm stoked because I love Capture One and finally he's going to do some more edits in Capture One and that's what I'm going to start with. So, all right, let's do this. Okay, so this, what you're seeing right now is the Capture One, uh, so this is Capture One, but we're using our own personal dashboard. So I just popped it open over here. It says Maston Labs. If you buy Maston Labs packs for Capture One, We've made our own dashboard to make it super easy to use. So if the complexity or the perceived complexity of Capture One has made you a little bit uh, scared of switching over, we got you covered. We made our own dashboard. It only has the controls you need to get a perfect edit. And then you can always add more tools to it. So there's, a, there's like a billion really amazing tools. Look at this add tool bar thing when I hover over it. There's got to be like 50 tools on here that you can add to your dashboard, but we just get you started in the right spot. So I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about Capture One or if you use Capture One and you want to use Mass and Labs like exactly the easiest way, use the dashboard. Um, oh yeah, one, one, one last thing. Throughout this entire live edit, if you have any questions, if I'm going too fast or if there's something you want to know more about, just put it in the comments and either Kyle or Casey will write it down on a board and show me and I will answer them live today. Live. Okay. So skin tone. Skin tone and presets are like skin tone and makeup. Um, if, you, if you go to a department store or I, I'm not an expert in makeup per se, but what I do know is that if you go to a department store or somewhere, the person helping you is going to look at your skin tone, like the colors that are naturally occurring in your skin tone, and try to find a makeup that uh, complements your skin tone. So certain colors, when they're laid on top of other colors, look really good. And certain colors look really bad. And the same concept applies to real film, like analog film, and therefore, it also applies to the presets and styles that we make that simulate these films. So finding the right film preset or right style is critical in getting a really nice skin tone. So in general, I've broken it into three categories. People of color, so primarily like black skin. Uh, Asian skin tones, there's a wide variety within every skin tone, obviously, but these are very general categories. Asian skin tone and then Caucasian skin tone. So in general, if you have uh, black skin, then Fuji Original, Fuji Pushed, and Kodak Everyday are going to be the most complementary films and or presets or styles that you can use for that skin tone. And this is because Fuji Original and Fuji Push in particular have a cyan and, and red base. And those colors work really, really good with black skin, black, brown uh, skin tones. It, it just looks really good. It's very complimentary. Kodak Everyday has Ektar 100 in it as one of the main presets or styles. And that film uh, really has a lot of red in it as well. And again, it looks really good on darker skin. So when I say red, it might, you might be freaked out and go, oh, I don't want people to have like red skin or whatever. 
don't think of it that way. Just think of it as that color is complementary to the skin tone that it is being applied to. It's not going to cover it. It's actually going to just enhance it. Uh, Asian skin tone is kind of in the same category. Um, if you use Fuji Original, Fuji Push, or Kodak every day, it's going to look fantastic. And then Caucasian skin tone, that's where the portrait films really come into play. So portrait Original and portrait Push. Kodak films in general, the, the portrait films, are very uh, yellow and orange biased, meaning they've got a lot of yellow and orange in the film itself which looks fantastic if you have really light skin like myself. So those Kodak Portra films look really good on white Caucasian skin. It makes it look really healthy. Um, it does not look so good on skin that already has uh, any kind of orange undertone in it because it builds up. It's just way too much orange and you don't want someone to be super orange usually. Uh, one last note is that Fuji Original, Fuji Push, and Kodak Every Day, yes, they flatter darker skin tones and, and Asian skin tones. They also look really good on Caucasian skin tones. They kind of fit everything. The only difference is that Caucasian skin tones will become very pale with those, those types of films or presets or styles. They'll just become very like porcelain-like, which is not a bad thing. If you are going for a Southern California light and airy look, then you use Fuji 400H from the, from the uh, Fuji original pack that we, we make. That is like the film that you go to whether your client is Caucasian or has darker skin or whatever. It's like a jack of all trades. So you can always come back to this slide. We, we're going to be posting a rewatch or a, a you know, we're going to be posting this video after the live event is done. You can always come back and look at the slide again and, uh, and refer to it if you're confused about anything or ask me questions in the live edit and I'll get to those. Um, but anyway, with those things in mind, I'm going to go through the images submitted by our community and show you what's up. Um, I'm starting in Capture One. Right now, we only have Fuji Original and Kodak Every Day. Those are the only packs that we have available for Capture One right now but all the other packs are coming to Capture One. So for those of you who are like, where is Portra original for Capture One? It is coming, it is coming. I promise you it is coming and you're gonna love it. So just so you know, it's all on the way. Okay, so Abul Shah, uh, really awesome dude in the community, sent me a ton of images with lots of different skin tones. You are amazing, keep doing that. And everyone else take notice uh, this is exactly what we need to do these shows really well, is a lot of good image submissions. So thank you, Abul. I just wanted to give you a shout out. Um, so I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with, gosh. So I've only got Fuji 400H on here, or Fuji Original and Kodak Every Day. I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to find actually maybe a couple that is mixed, like two different skin tones. Okay or several skin tones. Okay, this is perfect. We have a lot of different skin tones in this picture. So Abul sent this to me, um, and we'll get started. So, like I said, Fuji 400H, Fuji 400H from the Fuji Original Pack is very cyan and red, really good for that light and airy look, and it looks good across all skin tones, and I will show you what I mean. So here is Fuji 400H. So I just apply it. Um, the white balance is too cool in the photo and the exposure is a little bit low. I'm gonna fix those things in a second, but that's just applying Fuji 400H. I'm going to increase the exposure, make it a little more light and airy, and then I'm going to increase the temperature just a tiny bit, just like that. Um, all of our style and preset packs are simple and really easy to use. We pride ourselves in a very simple system. Uh, one thing that we really, really believe in is that it shouldn't be complicated. It, you shouldn't have to suffer through complicated edits to get a beautiful photo. You should be able to get there simply. And you'll see that in all the edits that I do. So I applied Fuji 400H, increased the exposure, 
and increase the temperature a little bit. Something else I can do is turn lens correction on. Often when a lens is shot wide open, there's distortion and vignetting around the sides of the image, meaning it's darker around the sides and the sides kind of warp. This is just due from shooting a lens wide open, meaning that you're shooting through the entire piece of glass rather than through a tiny little diaphragm where you're only using kind of the sweet center of the glass where there's no distortion or vignetting. Blah, okay, it's a lot. Anyway, long story short, lens correction on, brightens up the edges of the picture, takes away the distortion. Um, it changed this picture enough that I'm actually gonna drop the exposure again, but it evened it out in a really nice way. Okay, and there you have it. Uh, before, so this is before, and that's after. If you look at everyone's skin tone in this photo, you'll see that they're all like nice, acceptable skin tones. Um, none of them stand out as being like super off in any way. And we've got people that are uh, incredibly pale, such as this girl here, to darker skin, um, and skin that is kind of in between you know, those different shades, including uh, this girl here who seems kind of tan, so Caucasian but tan. And this girl's very, very white. So it, it works really well across everything. So thank you, Abul, for sending that in. Super nice. Um, I'm going to clone this image and then edit it with, uh, with Ektar, I guess, since I don't have the portrait ones in here to show you. Um, OK. Let's see here. We're going to go down to Ektar. So I do Ektar last because when you see Ektar, there's so much color that it's, it almost makes you blind to any other style. And Ektar is super popular right now. So I'm going to do it second and kind of show you the difference. Fuji 400H is the light and airy original gangster film and preset. So this is the one that everybody uses if you want a light and airy look. Ektar is kind of a new kid on the block. It's much more saturated. It's got a lot of punch. If you love color, then Ektar is the one you want, and I'll show you what I mean. So that's with Ektar. In fact, it's, it's so colorful, I'm gonna cool it down a little bit more. And I'm gonna bring down the exposure, just a skosh. There is probably I would say 30% more contrast or 40% more contrast overall in Ektar than nearly any other film, especially Fuji 400H, which is one of the least contrasty films available. But you can see the color is super nice. Um, if I wanted to knock the contrast down just a little bit, you can use one of the tone profile tools that we also include with every style pack. And these tone profiles, what they do is they change the amount of uh, contrast in either the highlights or the shadows or in both. So if I wanted to get detail back and lower the contrast in the sky, I would, I would hit highlight soft. If I wanted more detail and a little less contrast in the shadows, I would do shadow soft. If I wanted less contrast overall, I would do all soft. And these are small adjustments. They're not like the picture isn't going to radically change. These are tools taken from the Fuji Frontier scanner where we made all of our film emulations. And they're meant to just solve little lighting problems without changing the entire image. So if I go to All Soft, I'll just, I'll just kind of hover over it and come back. Maybe you can see it at home. So this is without All Soft, and that's with All Soft. I'm going to let it render here. So with and without. And all soft just brings the contrast down just a little bit, and it's really nice. I'll drop the exposure again, just a tiny bit. OK, so I'll show you before and after. So this is before. You've got just your kind of your gray uh, raw file, and then this is after with Ektar. Uh, I'll do a comparison here, too. So. Oh, this is great. OK, so on the left, you've got Ektar. You can see all of the beautiful contrast and color and saturation 
And on the right, you've got your classic Fuji 400H, you know, more pastel muted look. What I'm showing you right now are the two most popular wedding styles that are available in our community. So when I say style, that's because it's in Capture One, otherwise it would be a preset in Lightroom. But Fuji 400H and Ektar are the most popular looks going right now, uh, which is why we actually did these two packs first when we were starting to make things for Capture One, and then everything else will follow. But you can see the difference here. Um, and I like both. It's hard to say which, which is better. But anyway, I'm gonna move on, do some more photos, but that is just a quick difference between the two extremes of those films. And again, as you can see, both packs work well across all skin tones. When we get over to Lightroom and I've got access to all the packs, I'll show you when, when presets don't work with skin tones so you can see the difference. Okay. All right, so thank you, Abul. That is so cool that you sent all that, all these images in. Uh, I'm just gonna do a few quick edits here so you can see how these different uh, styles look on, on darker skin tones and see what you think. Again, if you have any questions while I'm doing this, please let us know and I'll stop and answer them for you. So here is Fuji 400H, that's just one click. And then all soft, let's see, yeah, all soft. And then I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit. Super easy edit. So this is before and that's after. I, I just have to say that I love the raw rendering engine in Capture One. The color is just so good. Um, I can't even really explain it exactly. It's more like there's better color information in the shadows and the lower midtones than I see in Lightroom. There's just more of a richness to it. So I really enjoy uh, editing in Capture One. It's been really, really fun. But you can see that's a super easy, simple edit with Fuji. And I'll just kind of work my way down here. This is from On2, really nice image. Uh, and On requested Kodak every day. So I'm gonna do the Ektar pack on this, or uh, Kodak every day pack, which has Ektar in it. So there it is, that's Ektar just rolling over it. Uh, this is like a, a beautiful, super colorful one-click edit. So that's really easy. So. <laughs> We, we normally advertise, like, get a beautiful edit in three clicks or less. Sometimes it's a single click, uh, depending on the white balance that the camera decided on when you took the photo and whether you got the exposure, you know, right. Um, one thing to mention is that some people wonder, what is the exposure that I need to be shooting at to get the right look? And I will say this in every live edit until I, the day I die, the right exposure is a neutral middle of the road exposure. You're not gonna unlock some secret look by shooting it at a darker exposure or underexposing it or overexposing it. You are gaining nothing by doing that, zero, zilch. The only time that you would ever wanna do some kind of tricky exposure so that you have a better edit in post is if you were shooting something like, not even this. I mean, I was, I'm trying to find something where there's a huge difference, like, Maybe in a photo like this, you would want to shoot it really underexposed to make sure that there's absolutely no detail lost anywhere and then bring it up later. But for 90% of your work, I want you to be shooting normally, which is awesome. Okay, we've got a question. Uh, yeah, this is from uh, Matilda uh, Romshaw. If you're, if you're familiar oh, yes, Matilda, yeah. Okay, so Matilda asks, what do you do when you have someone who has pale skin, very pale, and, and also who have kind of pink skin? Um, yeah, there are people like that that have yeah, kind of very pink undertone. And then how do you use the Kodak pack uh, with that? So that would be Ektar. Uh, okay, well, Matilda sent me a bunch of photos, so I will look for one that does that. Uh, thank you, An, for this photo. That was a super easy edit. Want to show you the before and after before 
and after with Ektar. It's super nice. Um, all right, so Matilda, let me find someone who is pink that you sent in. Maybe this guy. Yes, I bet this is the photo that you are referring to. So let's do it. Um, I don't know if Matilda is editing in Lightroom or Capture One, uh, but it shouldn't really make a difference. So I'm in Capture One now, so I'll do it here. So here is Ektar. And again, as you can see, it's like a massive blast of color. That is what Ektar is in a nutshell. It is a color blast. There's a lot of color, a lot of rich, nice color. Um, if you find that your skin tones, and this is just a one click, by the way, I haven't even like touched white balance or done anything else yet. If you are finding that your skin tones are not how you want, the number one thing that you should do is go to the white balance section and start pulling down your temperature just a little bit. So in this case, I'm going to pull down the temperature down about to there. Now you can see that he's got, uh, you know, the red in the skin that I'm sure that Matilda was referring to. If I go back to the raw image and zoom in, I can see that this dude is sunburned. I mean, without doing anything, he has a sunburn. So I'm not sure how much I can correct that out, but I will do my best. Um, so here's Ektar again. I'm going to drop the Kelvin or the white balance in Lightroom. In Capture One, they say Kelvin. So this is the same thing as just dropping the uh, temperature. Um, I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit. Just doing that alone will unblock a lot of really uh, super saturated areas. I think of it as a balloon. So you have like a little balloon that you, you know, for a kid's party and it's just like solid red. When you start blowing that balloon up, like stretching it out, just the fact that you're covering more space with that little balloon, it appears to be less red and less saturated. The same things happen to your photos when you increase the exposure and you use something like All Soft. You're unpacking the tones, like they're very compressed when the image is really dark. When you lighten up the image with exposure, you're also changing the saturation. It's kind of a wild thing. But it's the reason that like light and airy photos in general, whether you use mass labs or, or, or nothing or something else, it's the reason that light and airy photos have such nice skin. And it's also the reason that when you shoot dark and moody or you pull your exposure down, you have a lot of skin issues because you're building up a lot of density and a lot of color information in a small space. You're taking something and just squishing it down. So you have to do a lot more retouching, blemishes show up a lot more, etc. cetera. Uh, back in the day when I shot, well, I still shoot mostly film, but back before there was digital, they called it, well, there was digital, but it was very expensive. They called it Photoshop in a film when you would take something like Fuji 400H and shoot it way overexposed and then overexpose again with the scanner, like push, push it around. It would literally take away blemishes from your subject just by shooting that way. And that's because you're expanding the tones way, way out. So just to finish this up for you, Matilda, I've applied Ektar, increased the exposure, dropped the white balance. The last thing that you could do is do something like All Soft to further unpack those tones like I was talking about, and then increasing the exposure a tiny bit again. There's nothing I can do about uh, sunburn. So if I go to like the edge of his chest right down in here or like the top of his nose, this dude is just sunburned. You could go in with a brush or something and brush it out if you wanted, but that's about as far as you can go with Ektar in this situation. So here's before and here's after. Now, like I said at the very beginning of the video, Ektar has got a lot of red in it and we're worried about red. So what you can do, I'm going to clone this really quick. Uh, let me see here. Clone variant. I am going to go to um, Fuji 400H and show you how different it is when you're not using the most saturated style that we make. So there's Fuji 400H. I kind of have to start my edit over a tiny bit, but whatever. I'm going to increase the exposure and increase uh, temperature just a tiny bit. There we go. 
And this is a perfect example of how film is like makeup, or again, the styles and presets that we make from film. The, just by using Fuji 400H, which doesn't have such a heavy red bias like Ektar, just that alone makes this guy's skin like totally clean up and look not red. If we go to the Ektar version, you can see that red density is really building up. This is a great example of using the right preset for the right situation. Um, and again, both styles, both packs and both of those presets, and th that's only one preset out of three for each pack, there's other styles, um, they're our most popular. So it really depends on the situation. So I hope that answers your question. That was like the longest explanation ever, but I wanna be really, really thorough. Um, okay, I really wanna edit this guy. Okay, yes, I have a question. Uh, this is from Latanya Evans. Um, she asked, uh, she says that she's having a problem with dark skin tones that uh, tend to get grainy when she applies the preset. And she says she's using a uh, portrait and push on that. Okay, so she's in Lightroom. Yes. So we'll have to go over to Lightroom. So maybe I could do that now. So Tanya was, at, was saying that. Latanya, yeah. Oh, Latanya. Her images, okay, her images are looking grainy. Latanya's images are looking grainy when she uses them on dark skin and she's using portrait push. Okay, can you ask her real quick if she's using any of the uh, grain profiles that we have or if she's underexposing? That's a, that is a chronic thing, Facebook fam. <laughs> Everyone's all like underexpose, underexpose, underexpose. Just stop, just stop that crap. Don't do it anymore. Please just don't, look at me, look at me. Look at me, don't. Don't underexpose anymore, just quit that crap. Um, the reason is, is that when you underexpose, I don't know, probably because you're just doing some weird flex about like your camera can have, you know, like this crazy dynamic range. You're just screwing yourself because when you go to bring it back up in, in Lightroom or Capture One, you're making it grainy as hell. I'm sorry, but you just are. I don't care what camera you're shooting. It is just a bad choice. The only time you wanna like really underexpose, again, is if you're shooting like, I don't know, someone, a silhouette, it would otherwise be a silhouette against a sky, like, and you're, you're shooting for your subject and you just want like detail like everywhere from infinity to beyond, Okay, yeah, then do something dumb like underexpose a lot. That's fine. You, can you tell how much I hate underexposing? I'm not saying she does that. Did she do that? She said I might be underexposed. Okay, Latanya, Latanya, let's talk. It's just you and me right now. We're having an intervention. I want you to look at me. I want you and I to say together, I will no longer underexpose. I'll wait. Okay, cool. All right, we're on the same page. Just shoot normal and these things will disappear. I will try to help you regardless though in Capture One right now. Or not Capture One, how about Lightroom? All right, hey everybody, we're back. We're now in Lightroom. Um, I'm gonna try to replicate what Latanya was saying. So I'm gonna look for an underexposed image with someone with darker skin and see if I can get the graininess. Um, uh, let me just find someone that's underexposed. Okay, this isn't darker skin. Latanya, I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna do this one and then it's someone with darker skin and, but this is just underexposed. Okay, so this is by Lindsay Cochran. Let's do portrait push. Did she say which one she used? Which portrait push? No, okay. Uh, we'll just do, let's just do portrait 400 push one stop. So there's portrait 400, increase the exposure. I'm going to do lens correction on. And this puppy needs to be warmed up a bit. That looks good. That's really good. All right. That was easy. That was an easy edit. Um, let me see if I can find grain. Uh, yeah, it's a little, I mean, it's a little grainy. It looks like film grain in this case. Let's see what kind of fancy camera this is. Metadata. This is a Canon EOS 1DX. Gosh, I don't see too many of those around. Good camera though. This person must be a photojournalist or something. Um, that looks good. 
my, so what I did to kind of be careful about graininess, uh, well, there's nothing I did actually. I just like increased the exposure a bit after I applied it. Um, let me find someone of color, like darker skin. Try it again. I love this picture. All right, so Vivian Peterson. This is a great picture. Thank you for sending it in. I love it. Um, let's, let's do portrait push. So remember in the beginning of the broadcast, like 100 years ago, I said that the portrait films were not really ideal with darker skin because you're putting orange on orange. So if you already have any kind of orange undertone in your skin at all, uh, portrait films have a, a lot of orange in them. I'm going to put a little asterisk there, except for 160, which doesn't have so much orange. Uh, so in general, I don't recommend it for darker skin. But I'll show you what it looks like anyway, and then we'll do like a Fuji pushed edit, and you can see the difference. So, uh, so Vivian, I'm going to use, I don't know, Portra 400 pushed one stop. Um, as soon as I applied it, you can see she turned orange, a little bit orange. Uh, I'm going to do my best to make this work, though. So Portra 400 pushed one stop. Uh, I'm going to increase the exposure a tiny bit. I think maybe to there, lens correction on, because that's just the thing I do. You don't have to do lens correction on, I just do it. And then her skin tone looks orange and green, a little bit of both at the same time. Um, so I increased tint from nine to like plus, from plus nine to like plus 18, not too much, somewhere in there. And then with my temperature, I'm going to drop it down just a tiny bit. So um, drop temp tint down just again a little bit. Anyway, it's a little bit fiddly because it's not exactly the right, um, the right pack to use on her skin. So this is before and after. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head down a totally different path. I'm going to do it twice. So create a virtual copy. OK, so I said in the beginning, portrait films for Caucasian skin. So not, not necessarily the best for her. Um, and now I'm going to do, let's do Fuji Color Original, because we were kind of digging on that not too long ago. So there's uh, 400H already, like just even applying it, her skin is like, looks great. Um, increase the exposure just a little bit. Uh, there's not much I need to do. Maybe drop the temperature a tiny bit, but it looks great. I, again, I can never tell how well you can see this at home, but I'll put all three up at the end so you can see. Uh, and then we'll do one more edit here with, uh, let's see, let's do Ektar, the other big popular one. Uh, you can see all the red just come rushing in as soon as I applied it. Like, it's just like, hello, red is here. Like, all 1,000 of us, and we're, we're going to live with you for a while. Um, that red tone is just super colorful. It doesn't look necessarily bad on her skin. She's a little bit warm. I'm going to drop it down. Uh, that looks great. It looks like a watercolor almost. I love it. Uh, OK, let's put them all up, and we'll talk about them. OK. Go to the print section. Oh, wait. What am I doing? I just have to hit Y. No. How do I do a multi-compare? Is it Y in the library? Is it N? OK. That's it. Thank you, Casey. I'd be lost without you. OK. From left to right. So on the far left, we have Portra 400 push one stop. And you can see kind of the orange green orange green kind of creeping into her skin tone. It works fine, it's okay, uh, but it's not really the best match for her skin tone. The second photo, we've got Fuji 400H. It, it's, at least from my view here, it works way better on her skin. And then on the far end, we've got Ektar, which is kind of like the magic, the magic bullet. I mean, if we, if we ever had a magic bullet uh, preset or style, it would be Ektar. Just kind of looks good on everything. Brings out a lot of color, a lot of richness. Um, so is that helpful? I hope that's helpful.
Yeah, I'm just so stoked. It's hard to like stay on track like a little bit. I want to answer all your questions. Okay, we have a question. Uh, this is uh, also from Nicole. She submitted that one, uh, the, the image of the lamb in the water. Uh, the oh, with the thing. flowers? Yeah. Um, oh, I love so that I'd one. I'd love to see how you edit the black screen in the photo uh, that she submitted. It looks so warm, yet soft and shadow. Um, you know, just to get a warm look with a softer and shadow. Okay, so. In Lightroom, okay, I was gonna ask which platform. Oh, everybody, when you're asking questions, feel free to say which platform you wanna see, because I got both running, so we can do it, we can do it either way. All right, so back, back to the thing. I love this image, it's so good, it's just so good. Thank you so much, Matilda, for sending it in. Okay. All right, so her question is, how do I get nice warm skin and kind of softer shadows or softer background on this image. Did she say which uh, preset? Um, no, she just, I think she's just looking for a warm um, and soft look in the shadows something that would complement the color. Okay, something that would complement this. We'll do two extremes. I think today feels like a Fuji original Kodak everyday day because they're like the two extremes, um, but what we should also get into portrait, that's important too but that's usually for a Caucasian skin. Um, well, all right, let's see here. Let's do Fuji Color Original. So you want a softer look, like softer in the shadows, et cetera. I'm gonna take that to mean not too much contrast, right? Soft, yeah. soft, soft is not contrast, okay. So in that case, I would pick something out of the Fuji Original pack or the portrait original if she was Caucasian. Uh, those are our least contrasty packs. And go from there. So this is Fuji 400H. That's just one click. Uh, looks good. I mean, uh, I could warm it up a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit nicer, a little bit warmer. And I'm gonna go just a tiny bit um, towards magenta. I'm not sure if it's the pool water mixing with her swimsuit that looks kind of green over here in the corner. Um, her skin looks good, but I'm gonna just see what happens if I go a little magenta, just a tiny bit more. Oh yeah, that, lo that looks perfect. That looks perfect. Um, it looks perfect to me. If I had black skin myself, then I would actually have a better opinion of like when it looks really perfect. Um, but to my own eyes, it looks really good. Uh, and it looks really natural, it looks super good. That that's like was a two click edit. Yeah, I didn't even touch exposure. That's how easy it is. You don't have to suffer through all the tweaks and craziness, you make it easy. That's my little, you know, little pitch. Um, so this is before and after, looks really good. Now, if you wanted it to be softer, you would add all soft. So I'll do that again, so maybe it's easier to see. So this is before, and I want you to pay special attention to the corner up here. That's where you're gonna see most of what's happening. So this is before, and that's after. And you can see there, there's a lot more detail in the water here, like that, that blue is in there now, whereas before it's like kind of really faded away, like overexposed, I guess. Um, and it just makes the entire image softer. So that is before and after. Now I'm gonna duplicate this and go to the other extreme. I'll do three actually. I'll show you Portra, one of the Portra ones, and then I'll show you Ektar, because we are talking about skin tone today. All right, so Portra Original, let's do Portra 400. Uh, orange, it's like Orange City, like look at her nose. It can be tamed. So this is Portra 400 from the Portra Original pack. It can be tamed a little bit, that orange, by just dropping the temperature. But if you drop it too much, it, the whole image kind of really cools down. Um, you could also add magenta to deal with that orange just a little bit. But again, it's just not, I'm, I'm focusing just on the nose area here, like this color. It's just not as pleasing as Fuji. I mean, it's like night and day. Neither are bad. If, if you are shooting darker skin tones with portrait, you're, it's not like you're gonna deliver something and your client's gonna be like, ah, oh my God, like you're fired and I hate you and whatever. They're just gonna be like, 
that looks good. But you know that it could have looked maybe a little bit better if you had used the right pack for that client. So I hope that answers your question. I'm gonna do one more edit on this with Ektar and then show you all three. So that's with Ektar, bam. Red, red is back <laughs> and a lot of color. Um, like, I, like I showed you in the other edits, if you wanna tame this wild unleashing of color, the easiest way is just to drop your temperature a little bit. Um, if you drop it too much, you know, like down here, she starts to look kind of weird, but you can drop it a little bit from where it was originally. So like maybe like about there. I'll put all three of these up so you can see. So we've got, let me see here. We've got Fuji 400H in the top left, Portra 400 from the Portra original pack in the top right. And at the bottom, we've got Ektar from the Kodak Everyday Pack. Totally different looks. On a little side note, I just want everyone to know that it is important to know which pack you want. We have a quiz on our website that will help you with that if you're confused. And you can also go to the Facebook community, the Mass Labs Facebook community, and you can drop a raw file there. And we have like a ton of amazing community members. We have over 50,000 people in that group. They're all super nice. You have to be nice to be in there. If you're not, we kick you out. So there's like literally no mean people, which is great. And you'll have a ton of people jump in and edit your photo with whatever preset you want so that you can see how it looks on your photo. So it takes a little bit of the guesswork out. But again, refer to the slide that I showed in the very beginning if you want just like a cheat sheet. And also remember that your goal isn't to find like, well, it could be, but don't be afraid of having more than one pack or more than one preset that you work with because it really does matter the light that you're in and the subject you're shooting that it matches up with the right preset or style. So there is no like single solution that you're looking for. You're just building a toolkit that will get you through every situation and the mere fact that you're using Mass and Labs, period, like whatever pack, will bring consistency to your work. So we stay within a, a, very, a very singular uh, way of, of style, which is all based on real film. That's what we pay homage to is real film. We don't just like invent stuff. As long as you stay within that universe, your work will be consistent. So don't be afraid to own like Fuji, the Fuji original pack and Kodak every day or Fuji original and say like Portra Push because you might need or you will need both of them to get through all the situations you're in. Um, we are almost out of time. I'm gonna do just a few quick edits because we had so many good photos and I'm not gonna talk as much and you can just see me edit because I wanna, I wanna like make people happy that sent us images and I love that you sent images. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so start the montage music. Um, I'm gonna get going. All right, so Abul, you sent us like a million awesome photos so I'm gonna only do like one more of yours. And yeah, so Ektar looks fantastic. Flippin' Mint. There we go, three clicks and a little exposure bump, a little uh, temperature drop before and after. That's, that's Ektar in your face if you love color. Uh, Matilda sent this in. I just love this image. Uh, okay, that's, that's Ektar that looks like National Geographic style. If you want something a little more muted, let's do gold on him. So gold is also from the Kodak Everyday Pack. It's got cooler kind of green shadows. I love it. Um, so I applied it. I'm gonna drop the temperature a tiny bit and I'm gonna use my favorite tool in all of Lightroom and that is the auto upright feature to straighten everything out. There you go, before and after. This looks great. Um, let me see here. Ah, Matilda, you sent me some more. Okay, let's just whip through these. Let's do gold, mm, all soft, straighten the horizon, crop it to four by three because I don't like really tall um, verticals, and then warm it up a little and a little bit of magenta. 
There we go. Before and after. Um, okay. These are all Matilda's photos. Let's let's do this last one, and then I'm going to skip to to not Matilda. Although I love your photos, keep sending them in. You sent me so many good ones, so I take that back. Just keep sending them. Okay, 400H, all soft. I'm going to do all soft on this because they're standing in dappled light. Dappled light is not my favorite. Uh, that means there's little beams of light coming through the trees. So to kind of even that out, you can use all soft, like so. I'm going to straighten this. And then I'm going to increase the exposure and give it a little more warmth. I would actually, on the, this is one of the rare times I take a brush and just drop the exposure or maybe um, highlights and brush in uh, this guy's eye and head. Yeah, that looks about right. Um, I'm also gonna drop the saturation because when I brushed it in, it got a little more saturated. All right, perfect. There we go. Even though we had dappled light, looks great. Look at that, perfect. Well. Perfect as it can be. It's a great photo. I love, I love everything about it, actually. Okay, so this is Philip Tran. He wanted Fuji 400H pushed one stop. Great choice. Let's see how that looks. So Fuji colored push, one stop, and all soft. No, 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 I, I liked it before all soft. So like that, I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit. There's some kind of reflection going on here. I don't know if someone's holding a gold reflector. If you're watching this, please let me know. I'm just gonna take a guess that there's a gold reflector uh, because there's no shadow here, but they're really warm. So to balance that out, I'm gonna drop the temperature a little bit. And yeah, maybe that's a little too low. About there and a little more magenta. And there we go, before and after. Thank you for sending that in. This is from Ara Margarian. Uh, let's do, let's do, well, I don't know, Portrait Original. There's Portrait 400. Lens correction on. Increase the exposure. We've got some reflection from the ground, a green ground reflection in this little kid's face, but I think it should be all right. Increase the, the uh, temperature. And I'm gonna add a little magenta to cancel out the green in his face. This is a tricky image. It's not quite in focus, so there's not much contrast. If I did all hard, there we go. That adds a little bit more contrast. And there you go with this little kid. Um, all right, skipping ahead. Okay, this is all Matilda. Matilda all day. Oh, this is cool though. We don't have any indoor images. Let's do, um, this feels like, this feels like gold. Let's do gold. So gold 200 from Kodak every day. All soft. Going to increase the exposure. Uh, drop the tint towards green. Just a tiny bit. I'm looking at her mostly, or like right in here, getting this tint dialed in. I'm also going to drop the uh, temperature. And then while I'm in here, I'm going to go up on exposure just a tiny bit and zoom back out. Nah, maybe I went too cool. Increase the temperature. That looks good. Go down to my favorite tool, auto upright. And let's do full. Perfect. And crop it to four, three. Get rid of that black bar at the top. Love this little oil painting on the side. That looks really, really good. Looks cool. I love details like that. All right, so that is before and after. All right, flying through here, flying through. What do we got? Oh yeah, so Sasha Pop Popovic sent this in. I love Hawaii, so let's do it. Uh, this feels like this feels like Ektar to me. I mean, it's tropical. So there's Ektar, all soft. Increase the exposure and a little bit more warmth. Ah, oh, it looks so good. That looks so good. So nice, man. Easy edit. It was, I mean, did you see how easy that was? You could just like slow it down and just do what I did. It was really easy. Um, and that's how it should be. All right. Megan Frasher, you wanted Fuji 400H original. Okay, that's cool. Let's do Fuji original 400H. 
Uh, we're gonna increase the temperature. Let's do cloudy from the white balance panel. We have our own little white balance section here too that most of the time will get you just like right in the ballpark of where it should be. He's in a cloudy, well not, not exactly cloudy, but not exactly full sun. Cloudy white balance got him there in one click. So that's Fuji 400H, cloudy white balance, and done. Uh, all right, Krista Zurbin wanted portrait push. This is a rad image. This is really cool. I love it. This is cool. This bridges the 80s and the 90s and the thousands together, the knots. Okay, so this is portrait pushed. Let's do, ooh, that's cool. Let me see. I don't know which one. They all look good. Ooh, that's so cool. Ah, uh, okay, I gotta decide. I like this one. So portrait for under pushed one stop. Um, love the tones in this. Let's do highlight soft. Done. That looks so good. I love it. Okay, next, next, next. Let's see. Uh, this one looked kind of tough, which I like. So Brandy Tool wanted portrait push. All right, we got that open. Let's do portrait push 160. Uh, open shade, uh, open shade, and increase the exposure. And let's do highlight soft. We'll bring that that um, sky back in a little bit. That looks good. And let's see what my friend Auto Upright can do. All right, cool. And this is before and after. Looks really good. This is what I'd call like. Bright and moody is bright and moody. It's a new one. You should never put yourself in a box. You should never be a light and moody, light and airy or dark and moody or whatever. You should think about the subject matter. Okay, let's do one last one. Um, this person looks mysterious. Let's see, Fuji, this is from Ursa Persic. And Ursa wanted Fuji 400H. Okay, 400H, lens correction on. I'm gonna increase the exposure. Yeah, to about there. Increase the temperature just a tiny bit. And let's do all soft to bring that sky in. I don't know, I like her dark dress, so I'm gonna just do highlight soft. That means I'm only gonna mess with the highlights, not the shadows. I want her dress to have that contrast but I wanna kinda of bring the sky back in. So, highlight soft, and that looks good. Make it 4.3, because everything should be 4.3. Tilt this, bop. Great. All right, before and after. So that wraps up our session today. Um, I hope this was super helpful. Thank you so much everyone for sending in your images. Uh, I get a kick out of like seeing what you guys send in, answering questions, um, and just helping out in any way that we can. Because we are all very invested in your success. We want to see you go from where you are to a higher place and we believe that consistency and finding a clear, easy path for your edits will do that for you. So we wanna show you how everything works, encourage you to try new things and get you into the community if you're not already, because you will grow there. Even if you don't own anything that we make and maybe you never will or whatever, or you're not sure, join the Masson Labs community. That is where the growth and the learning is happening. And there are a lot of people standing by to help you, including us, including everyone there, um, and we just love what we do. So, all right, thank you for joining us. We will be doing this uh, as much as possible. Be sure to join the group again because you can submit images ahead of time and you will see your images in the next episode. So, thank you so much and have a great day.